At this moment, the city is hosting a competition for Bishakuya, to find out who will become the king of gourmet hunters. So Toriko, Sunny, and Coco also came here, unexpectedly. The sponsor of this competition is a kid, but, he is one of the richest people in the world, with a chain of restaurants distributed worldwide. The goal of this competition is to find the most delicious ingredient. The winner will be crowned the king of gourmet hunters, and along with the title comes a prize of 1 billion yen, equivalent to nearly 7 million dollars, which surprises everyone, because it's a large sum of money, turns out he wants to find the most delicious ingredient, to cure his pet's loss of appetite named Chris, which surprises everyone, because it's Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster, level 34. Coco realizes Chris is a very rare creature, so, everyone started to present their ingredients, but, Chris doesn't want to eat any of them, Toriko immediately noticed that Chris was lacking in some nutrients, Sunny and Coco also notice it lacks sweetness. So, they need to find a super sweet ingredient, to cure Chris's loss of appetite, but, all three choose different ingredients, thus, they start arguing, at this point, Coco tells everyone, after Nessie recovered, it might be able to find a legendary fruit, which excites Toriko, so all three decide to compete against each other, watch who will find the ingredient for Chris first, so, all three start off, while Sunny is searching for the milk whale, because inside the milk whale, there is a lot of milk containing a large amount of sweetness, but, his real purpose is to use the milk for skincare. Meanwhile, Coco will search for the honey dragon. It's an ingredient commonly used as food for Nessie, on Toriko and Komatsu's side. They are entering a forest. Suddenly, Komatsu sees a very beautiful butterfly. Unexpectedly, he is mesmerized by its scent. Luckily, Toriko helps Komatsu snap out of it. Turns out it's the Butterspice level 5. Its scent will attract other animals to dangerous species. Suddenly, Toriko spotted a tree root. So, Toriko immediately analyzes it, and he realizes it's the friction sweet potato. Thus, he cuts one and gives it to Komatsu. As soon as he tasted it, he found it very sweet, on Sunny's side. He uses his hair to find the milk whale. So, it immediately rises to the surface. Turns out the milk whale is level 21. While he's waiting for the milk to spout out, there's a sea urchin level 27, and a shrimp fly level 22 fighting. Sunny realizes if the milk whale is stressed, it won't be able to spout out milk, thus, Sunny and Rin try to stop them, but, they still refuse to leave. On Coca's side, he found the nest of the honey dragon, turns out the honey dragon is level 28, so, they all attack Coco together, he uses poison to counterattack them, while Toriko and Komatsu are being chased by the chestnut medillo level 21. On Chris's side, he still refuses to eat any food, making Bono very worried, because they have been close since childhood, while Toriko has escaped the chestnut medillo. Suddenly, another monster appears. Toriko sees it from behind, it's the grand berry tree he's looking for, but, it's being guarded by a large turtle, turns out it's the shark box turtle level 32, so, it immediately attacks Toriko, unexpectedly, it can burrow underground, thus, Terry predicts its location, when Toriko attacks, it manages to dodge, Toriko realizes the shark box turtle moves like it's swimming on the ground, on Sunny's side, he's still trying to stop these two animals, while Coco is still being attacked by the swarm of honey dragons, he notices there's a lead bee commanding the swarm, so, he tells Kiss to lure the swarm into the sea, and immediately takes the opportunity to attack the lead bee, causing the swarm to become chaotic, thus, Coco uses poison to defeat the lead bee, thanks to that, he's able to collect honey, on Sunny's side, he has found a way, he uses his hair to stir up the sand underwater, like how a pot of dolphins hunts for prey, causing the sea urchin to rise up and attack Sunny, so, he pushes it and the shrimp fly away, to make the milk whale feel safe to spout milk, finally, the milk whale spouts milk, making Sunny very happy. While Bono is still worried about Chris, because it still refuses to eat anything. Turns out Bono found Chris abandoned in the forest when they were young, so he brought Chris home to raise. On Toriko's side, he's battling the shark box turtle, but, its shell is very tough. He and Terry can't defeat it. Suddenly, Toriko comes up with an idea. He uses nail punch to hit the ground, sending the turtle flying. So, he continues to use flying knife to attack the turtle, causing it to flip over on the ground. Thanks to that, he defeats the turtle. Finally, Toriko is able to pick the grand berry. Now, Sunny has brought the milk back, making everyone excited, thinking Chris will drink it. Unexpectedly, it still refuses to drink Sunny's milk. It's Coca's turn to come back. So, he immediately lets Chris try the honey, making Chris start to enjoy it. 
but it still refuses to eat, making everyone disappointed. Finally, Toriko also returns. So, he immediately lets Chris try the grand berry, thinking this time it will eat. Unexpectedly, Chris still refuses, making Bono very disappointed, because no one can make Chris want to eat. Suddenly, Chris reacts very strangely. Komatsu realized it was trying to convey something. It turns out it wanted to eat all three ingredients together. So, Komatsu suggests everyone give these ingredients to it. Komatsu starts cooking. Thanks to his experience making the century soup before, Komatsu can hear the voices of the ingredients. By evening, Komatsu has finished cooking, creating a giant fruit sorbet. So, Bono Spoon feeds Chris a bite. Finally, Chris agrees to eat, making Bono and everyone very happy. Suddenly, Chris starts glowing and evolving, surprising everyone. Coco realizes Chris has matured, and it wants to return to its homeland, but, Bono doesn't want Chris to leave, Toriko says, no matter what creature it is, there will come a time when it has its own life, making Bono remember always being with Chris since childhood, at this point, he understands, and decides to let Chris leave, unexpectedly, when Chris leaves, it throws back an apple, so, Sunny catches it, turns out it's the legendary fruit that Coco mentioned, thus, Bono decides to share this apple with everyone, making them very happy. When Toriko tries it, he finds this apple very delicious, like he's eating many different ripe fruits. But, in the battle of the four heavenly kings, no one wins. The next day, Toriko returns to the restaurant, to enjoy Komatsu's century soup. Not only Toriko, but everyone who eats Komatsu's century soup, is very pleased. At this point, Komatsu brings out a bottle of wine for Toriko. Turns out Toriko asked him to prepare it, making Komatsu curious, not knowing who Toriko intends to give this bottle of wine to, on the side of the Bishikukai organization. They are still trying to increase their forces, to help their boss obtain God. At this moment, Toriko had arrived at a small house, it turns out he's here to find someone special, so, he takes out Komatsu's bottle of wine, turns out he is the president of the Igo named Ichiryu, and he is also the foster father of the four heavenly kings group, seeing Toriko's wine, he is very pleased, Ichiryu realizes Toriko has eaten the rainbow fruit, jewel meat, BB corn, and century soup. He realizes Toriko has become much stronger. So, he tells Toriko, go find God, which shocks Toriko, because he didn't expect the reappearance of information about God to be real. At this point, he tells Toriko, the legendary gourmet hunter Acacia, 500 years ago, left information about special ingredients for his three disciples, and the first disciple of Acacia is Ichiryu. The second person is knocking master, Jiro. The third person is the current boss of the Bishikukai. This surprises Toriko and he asks, how old is dad this year? But, he's only concerned about eating. When Toriko wants to eat, he can't keep up with his speed. At this point, he says, if God appears, it will surely bring about a new war. If Toriko wants to obtain God, he must participate in this battle. He realizes Toriko has grown. Different from when he was young training with Coco, Sunny, and Zebra, at this point, Toriko is confident that he will find God, and will lead the gourmet age. This makes Ichiryu very excited, wanting to test Toriko's strength. While Ichiryu can jump on the water, Toriko has to row the boat to chase after him. At this point, he has chosen an island to compete, which excites Toriko, and he is confident in his strength. So, he immediately uses flying knife to attack, but Ichiryu only needs to blow a breath. To blow away Toriko's flying knife. Thus, Toriko continues to use the flying fork. Unexpectedly, Ichiryu easily blocks it again. Toriko then approaches him, and uses the 13-hit nail punch on Ichiryu's abdomen. Unexpectedly, he still doesn't flinch, surprising Toriko. Ichiryu realizes after that move, Toriko can no longer use his left arm. So, he decides to use his new skill, and puts all his strength into the leg fork technique to attack Ichiryu. But, Ichiryu punches the ground, redirecting Toriko's leg fork towards the ground. He then continues to use leg knife, unexpectedly, Ichiryu still blocks it. Toriko continues to release his gourmet cells, putting all his strength into the 13-hit nail punch with his right hand. But, Ichiryu only uses one finger to block it, creating a huge shockwave, surprising Toriko. And Ichiryu is very pleased that Toriko has become stronger. So, he says he will teach him the skill of running on water. Then, Ichiryu punches Toriko away, causing him to glide on the water. At this point, Toriko has demonstrated all his strength. So, he asks, can I enter the gourmet world now? 
You still can't enter the gourmet world, because there are many powerful monsters and harsh weather conditions there. And he tells Toriko, if you want to enter the gourmet world, you must adapt yourselves to various environments. So, he devised a training plan for Toriko, telling him to go up to the sky and fetch the ozone herb, which excites Toriko, and he immediately wants to try eating it. The next evening, Toriko took Komatsu to the tallest building in the world, making Toriko very excited, because it's his first time eating here, all the dishes are high class, turns out this banquet was invited by Ichiryu for both of them, Komatsu feels all the food here is delicious, making Toriko and Komatsu unable to stop eating, finally, they're full, Toriko tells Komatsu, the foster father has assigned him a task, to find the king of vegetables in the sky, it's called vegetable sky, which surprises Komatsu, because there are all kinds of vegetables in the world, Toriko also tells Komatsu, the king of vegetables is called the ozone herb, it is the pinnacle of all vegetables, which makes Komatsu very excited, and he agrees to go with Toriko, so, the next morning, I go prepared a private aircraft, to take Komatsu and Toriko to vegetable sky, at this point, Toriko remembered what Ichiryu had said, for a gourmet hunter, the presence of a skilled chef is crucial, so, you should travel with that chef, Toriko realizes, he needs to be stronger to protect Komatsu, finally, they arrived at the place, making Komatsu surprised, because he sees a giant beanstalk in the sky, Toriko said this beanstalk is 32,000 feet tall, at this point, the aircraft landed on the beanstalk, so, Toriko and Komatsu had to climb to its top by themselves, making Komatsu worried, because it's really too high, at this point, Komatsu starts to feel exhausted, suddenly, a flock of level 2 ugly-faced birds appeared, making Komatsu frightened, Toriko says that although these birds look scary, they are very friendly, so, Toriko and Komatsu decided to rest on a leaf, the current temperature is 23 degrees Celsius, the higher they go, the lower the temperature will be, Komatsu realizes this journey is very difficult, in the evening, Toriko and Komatsu continue to climb, suddenly, Komatsu falls, fortunately, Toriko catches him in time, at this point, a level 11 large four-winged bird appears, Toriko realizes they already have food for dinner, so, that night they grilled the bird and ate it, the next morning, Toriko and Komatsu continue to climb. Currently, the temperature is 10 degrees Celsius and the altitude is 10,000 feet. So, the wind has started blowing. Toriko and Komatsu continue to climb and encounter many different wild beasts. By evening, they stop to rest. Suddenly, Komatsu gets a headache. Toriko realizes it's due to altitude sickness. Fortunately, it's not too serious. Toriko remembers Ichiryu saying, they must quickly adapt to various climates so, they can enter the gourmet world, the next morning, Toriko tightly ties Komatsu to himself, because he realizes the higher they go, the more dangerous it becomes, suddenly, a level 40 air gorilla appears, unexpectedly, it's being attacked by a camouflaged snake, Toriko recognizes it as a level 46 wicked beanstalk, so, it starts attacking them, Toriko immediately fights back against these monsters, unexpectedly, they are numerous, and they throw Toriko off the giant beanstalk, causing him to fall down, fortunately, Toriko had prepared a parachute, which helps him glide, suddenly, a flock of level 13 drill birds appears, they attack Toriko, tearing his parachute, so, Toriko uses flying knife to defeat them, fortunately, both of them catch a leaf, thus, they are safe, unexpectedly, under the sea, a gust of wind blows, causing the atmosphere to change, forming a storm, Toriko realizes this is a cumulonimbus cloud, seeing the giant thunderclouds above, making Komatsu fearful, so, Toriko begins to prepare, he takes out an oxygen leaf, and puts it into a mask, to create an oxygen mask for Komatsu, because the air up there will be very thin, then, Toriko starts climbing up, suddenly, a block of cold air blows in, Toriko realizes this wind has a temperature of minus 50 degrees Celsius, so, Toriko immediately uses the shivering technique, to prevent himself and Komatsu from getting frozen, but, this technique consumes too much energy, Toriko continues to climb forward, suddenly, the cold air disappears, but, a hailstorm appears instead, so, Toriko rushes Komatsu to run fast, to escape from these hailstones, then, comes a thunderstorm, making Komatsu scared, because if this continues, they will die, but, Toriko reassures Komatsu, Komatsu realizes he's lacking oxygen, so, he hands his oxygen mask to Toriko, but, Toriko immediately puts it back on him, and tells Komatsu to trust him, 
Thus, Toriko continues to move forward. Now, both of them are running into the thunderclouds. Unexpectedly, the wind inside is very strong, blowing Toriko and Komatsu away, making Toriko gradually lose sensation. But, Toriko realizes, Komatsu still trusts him. So, he is determined to get Komatsu to the top. Toriko realizes he needs to keep the oxygen in his body, not letting oxygen escape outside. So, he only breathes out carbon dioxide. Thanks to this, Toriko learns how to control his breathing. Suddenly, they see a giant lightning bird. Toriko recognizes it as the lightning phoenix. So, he takes a feather from it, which helps him pass through the thunderstorm. Finally, both are safe. Toriko realizes they're almost there. Thus, he runs ahead quickly. Finally, they reach the upper layer of clouds. Both realize this place is vegetable sky, making them very happy. Suddenly, Toriko sees Komatsu's face looking like an old man's, turns out he's too frightened. Now, both start exploring this place. Toriko realizes these clouds are formed from volcanic ash, so, it could provide nutrients to the plant. Finally, they see the garden of fruits and vegetables, making them very surprised, because there are many types of vegetables here, Toriko smells the fresh scent of all the vegetables here, making him unable to resist. Then, he cuts a carrot to try, unexpectedly, its taste is very sweet and juicy, while Komatsu is with cucumber, helping his face to recover and shine. So, both continue to try other fruits and vegetables, unexpectedly, the broccoli here is very large, thus, Toriko and Komatsu immediately try it, even inside it has a very delicious sauce, making both unable to stop eating. Next is a pond of French-style fried potatoes. Then, comes a giant garlic and tomato tree. Now, both are very full. Suddenly, they have stomach aches. Toriko realizes that digesting many vegetables will be very fast. So, both of them immediately ran to the natural restroom. Finally, they feel comfortable. Suddenly, Komatsu sees a giant tree. He recognizes it as the ozone herb. So, he immediately informs Toriko. But, Toriko sees a footprint of GT Robo making him worried. When he hears Komatsu has found the ozone herb, Toriko is happy. Unexpectedly, ozone herb had been closed off. So, Toriko jumps down to try to open it, because he realizes behind this layer of leaves is the ozone herb. But, it is very hard. Suddenly, Komatsu hears the ingredient seems to have been discarded. The ozone herb releases steam and shrinks back into a seed, causing Toriko to not understand why. But, Komatsu recognized, this ozone herb is an ingredient that needs special preparation, because it's like a puffer whale, will have a defense mechanism against human impact. Toriko then realizes, Komatsu has been able to hear the voice of the ingredient. So, both immediately go in search of another ozone herb plant, but, they don't know they're being watched from behind. At this point, both discovered a whole garden of ozone herb here, thus, Toriko and Komatsu immediately try to find a way to open its shell, but, they keep failing causing many ozone herbs to turn into seeds, when both didn't know what to do. Then, Komatsu realized, he and Toriko had to pull down these two leaves at the same time. Unexpectedly, they succeeded, making both very happy, because the ozone herb didn't turn into seeds. At this point, Toriko used his super sensitive nose to find suitable leaves, but, they continued to fail. Finally, both successfully split an ozone herb plant, Toriko realizes the level of the ozone herb is not less than 60, and Toriko thanked Komatsu, because thanks to Komatsu, he was able to successfully obtain the ozone herb. Now, they have split the last two leaves, and see the ozone herb inside, making both very happy, because they smell the sweet scent of the ozone herb. So, Toriko immediately tries it. Unexpectedly, the ozone herb evaporates and disappears again. They realize they both need to eat at the same time, Thus, they continue to open another ozone herb plant. This time they eat the ozone herb at the same time. So, they succeeded, making both very happy, because the taste of the ozone herb is delicious. Toriko feels like he has many different fruits and vegetables in his mouth. Suddenly, Toriko's muscles become larger. He realizes his gourmet cells have evolved, and he understands what Ichiryu said. So, Toriko asks Komatsu, do you want to collaborate with me? The two of us will create a top-class full-course menu, which makes Komatsu very happy, and recalling their journeys together, thus, Komatsu agrees to become Toriko's teammate. Suddenly, a monster appears, surprising Toriko and Komatsu. He thought it was a GT Robo, but, Toriko immediately realizes, this is completely a living creature. At this point, Toriko doesn't feel its killing intent, so, he tells Komatsu not to move. It then passes by both, 
and approaches the ozone herb plant. The creature then bites into the ozone herb with one bite, but, finding it unsuitable to its taste, so, the creature leaves, Toriko realized it wasn't Bishakukai's GT Robo, and this creature is not from the human world. At this point, Toriko notices, the ozone herb has two bite marks from the creature, surprising him, because of its incredible speed, like two people eating at once, and it has been observing them, to learn how to eat the ozone herb. Toriko realizes this is an extremely intelligent and powerful creature. Meanwhile, Ichiryu has received news, that Toriko and Komatsu have returned, so, they bring him an ozone herb as a gift, at this point, he tells them both, the level of the ozone herb is 68, while Komatsu was feeling very nervous, because today he gets to meet the president of Igo, when Toriko thought he could enter the gourmet world, Ichiryu says it's still not enough, and he gives Toriko a list of training locations, surprising Toriko, because it's too many, he says, Sunny and Koko have started their training courses, Sunny is preparing to depart, while Koko is accompanying Kiss, Ichiryu also mentions that Zebra will participate in training, which surprises Toriko, because Zebra is currently in gourmet prison, so, Toriko decides to continue the training process, making Komatsu very excited as well, at that moment, Ichiryu sees Toriko and Komatsu, reminding him of Acacia and Froze from the past, suddenly, Toriko asks him about the creatures on Vegetable Sky, surprising Ichiryu, who tells Toriko to train diligently, Ichiryu realizes, that the creatures have begun to enter the human world, surprisingly, Ichiryu can also eat ozone herb alone, meanwhile, Setsuno is preparing ozone herb for Jiro, which Komatsu brought as a gift for them, surprisingly, both Setsuno and Jiro can eat the ozone herb by themselves, but, they notice changes in the gourmet world, the next day, Toriko finds a giant rock, wanting to test his new strength after evolution, so, Toriko uses a 15-hit nail punch on the rock, unexpectedly causing it to fly up and shatter, surprising Komatsu and Terry. Then, Komatsu grills meat for Toriko to eat, making him very happy. Toriko still wants to enter the gourmet world, but, he realizes Komatsu and Terry are not ready yet, so, he decides to test himself alone in the gourmet world. That night, Toriko dines with Sunny, and tells him that, he will enter the gourmet world. Sunny then reveals to Toriko, that he had tried to enter the gourmet world before, but almost died. Luckily, Yosaku saved him. Sunny sees Toriko's excitement, similar to his own before entering the gourmet world. So, he shows Toriko the way into the gourmet world. However, he is still very worried about Toriko. The next day, Toriko arrives at a mountain peak, and ahead lies the gourmet world. Suddenly, a guardian appears. He tells Toriko that, the gourmet world occupies 70% of the Earth's surface, and it's a place humans haven't fully explored. So when entering, Toriko won't be able to contact the human world. And there are many different paths into the gourmet world. Only this waterfall basin of life is the safest route. Despite warning Toriko about many gourmet hunters dying here, Toriko is undeterred. He immediately jumps down below. At this moment, Toriko felt very excited. Suddenly, he was blown by a gust of wind into the cliff. It turns out to be an indeterminate level breath dragon attacking him. So, Toriko immediately counterattacks. But the distance is too far. Toriko continued to be struck against the cliff by it, causing him to fall down below. When he regains consciousness, he finds himself in a forest. Toriko realizes his body can't move. Suddenly, a monster appears. It turns out to be an indeterminate level Asura tiger. Toriko feels his body is very heavy, making him unable to move. When the tiger attacked, Toriko tried to dodge the blows. The tiger continued its assault. So, Toriko used leg knife to block. But, he was still knocked back towards a gorilla. It turned out to be an indeterminate level King Lendler. Thus, it attacked Toriko. So, Toriko immediately used the 15-hit nail punch, to fend off its attacks. Although he managed to knock down the gorilla, Toriko was exhausted. Fortunately, the two beasts fought each other, sending Toriko flying into a bed of cactus. It turned out to be a desert. Although Toriko's body no longer felt heavy, he felt the intense heat of the desert. Toriko realized that staying here too long, would dehydrate his body, as Toriko tried to get some water from the cactus, he was unexpectedly attacked by the cactus, sending him back into the forest, Toriko's body began to feel heavy again, suddenly, large raindrops began to fall from the sky, threatening to tear his body apart, fortunately, Toriko found a way out, but, he encountered a strange bird-like creature, it immediately attacked Toriko, however, 
he managed to evade. At this moment, Toriko realized that this place was indeed hellish. As the creature continued its assault on him, suddenly, the flock of bird-like beasts was defeated. A man appeared, surprising Toriko, and Toriko realized he was Jiro. At this point, the flock of beasts resumed their attack on them, so, Jiro immediately used his knocking gun, and continuously subdued the flock of beasts. When the gun ran out of ammo, he reloaded, swiftly taking down the beasts at a rapid pace, surprising Toriko, as he had defeated them all. Suddenly, the tiger and the gorilla approached, so, Jiro used knocking into himself, releasing his gourmet cells, transforming into a giant and saying, get lost now. This immediately scared them off making them flee. Even Toriko felt intimidated. At this point, they conversed with each other. Toriko couldn't believe he was saved by a legendary Bishakuya. But, he wondered why Jiro was so young. Jiro avoided Toriko, because he hurriedly entered the gourmet world. Jiro just slightly threatened him, enough to make Toriko scared and step back. He said, here, if you let your guard down even for a moment, you'll die instantly, and this forest is a forest located underground. So, the gravity here is very strong. Besides this place, there's a desert, where an immense amount of heat is radiated, and the waterfall crushed Toriko, because of a giant tree killing its prey, surprising Toriko. Now, he understood how dangerous the gourmet world was. Jiro said, you need to have more strength, and trust in your teammates. So, Toriko remembered Komatsu. It turns out Komatsu was the one who called Jiro to help Toriko, because Sunny had informed Komatsu earlier, that Toriko had ventured alone into the gourmet world. At this point, Toriko realized Komatsu was very worried about him. So, he decided to return. The next day, Komatsu was still very anxious. Suddenly, Toriko returned, making Komatsu very happy. So, Komatsu prepared a delicious meal for Toriko, while he was still crying, because Toriko had returned safely. At this point, Komatsu cooked him some very tasty meat, which made him very happy. Thus, Komatsu gave Toriko a bowl of strawberries. Each grain of rice was a small strawberry. So, Toriko immediately ate it. He felt the taste of strawberries filling his mouth. Komatsu cooked many delicious dishes for Toriko. And finally, the century soup, which made him very happy. At this point, Komatsu asked Toriko, Are the ingredients in the gourmet world delicious? I don't eat anything there, because I want to eat with you. This made Komatsu very happy and he wanted to cook even more delicious dishes for Toriko. Suddenly, Komatsu's kitchen knife broke, which shocked him. Toriko realized that the ingredient he was cutting was a very hard-shelled nut. It turns out this knife was Komatsu's first knife, since he started as a chef, and it has processed many ingredients with Komatsu. Toriko realized that because Komatsu is very kind, that's why he could hear the voice of the ingredients. Suddenly, Toriko remembered in the training list, there was an ingredient called Milk Stardust, which could help Komatsu restore his knife. Komatsu realized that Melk was a famous master knife maker. This made Komatsu very joyful. So, the next morning they began their journey to Mount Melk, which made Komatsu very excited, because he was about to meet the world's number one knife maker. According to Toriko, he was also very powerful, specializing in using high-level beasts to test knives. But no one has ever seen Melk's true face, because he doesn't interact closely with people, at this point. Both of them arrived at the foot of the mountain, which shocked Komatsu, because they had to climb a very tall mountain, about 13,000 feet high. Toriko said that this staircase was built by Melk himself, and it had up to 20,000 steps. While Toriko kept running up, Komatsu was very exhausted. By evening, they hadn't even covered half the distance, but Komatsu was still determined to meet Melk. By nightfall, they had dinner together and rested. The next morning, Komatsu was pursued by a pack of level 15 furnips. When he was in danger, luckily, Toriko rescued Komatsu in time. Suddenly, they were attacked by a pack of level 18 rock wolves. So, Toriko jumped over them. At this point, he noticed they weren't being chased anymore. Toriko realized they were getting close to Melk's location. Thus, the beasts were afraid of him. Then, Komatsu saw Melk's house. Suddenly, Toriko felt a terrifying aura. At this moment, a level 22 scale Kong appeared. When it was about to attack Komatsu and Toriko, it was immediately attacked by a sharp iron knife, causing scales on its body to fall off. So, it ran away. At this moment, someone appeared. Toriko recognized this person had helped them. Toriko thought he was Melk's disciple. Unexpectedly, he said, I am Melk, which surprised Toriko and Komatsu, because Melk was very young. 
but, it had been a long time since anyone had seen his true self, so, Melk welcomed them, let both of them see his workspace, which made Komatsu very excited, because there were many kitchen knives here, when Komatsu tried to touch a knife, Melk stopped him, but, the knife fell down. Luckily, Toriko rescued Komatsu in time. Unexpectedly, the knife was deeply embedded in the ground. Toriko noticed there were many knife marks on the ground, and the knives here were all very sharp, Melk told Toriko. The knife he was holding was made from level 55 shark teeth, which puzzled Toriko how Melk found such ingredients, Melk said he found them all by himself, but, Toriko didn't believe it, because he realized Melk wasn't that strong, so, he used a knife technique, cutting a line on the ground, surprisingly, this made Melk angry, thus, he decided to fight Toriko outside, at this point, Melk took out his newest knife, to test its sharpness against Toriko, but Toriko realized, Melk was hiding something he couldn't say, so, Melk attacked Toriko, Toriko used his knife technique to counterattack, which caused Melk's knife to chip, but, Melk just needed to sharpen it once and it was as sharp as new, so, Toriko caught Melk and subdued him, at this point, Melk realized he was Toriko, one of the four heavenly kings, it turns out Toriko had realized from the beginning that he wasn't the real Melk, because Melk's body was very large, so, all the objects and doors in the house are much larger than normal, and Chairman Igo had once told Toriko, that Melk was an old man, thus, he told Toriko, Melk was his master, and he was Melk II, which surprised Komatsu, he even admired Melk, now, Melk II asked, who are you? When he knew he was Komatsu, who had prepared the century soup, which surprised him, and Komatsu was delighted, because even Melk on the mountain knew him, at this point, Toriko asked where Melk the first was, so, Melk told them, he was looking for ingredients to sharpen stones, at this point, Komatsu asked Melk to forge his knife again, when Melk saw Komatsu's knife, he was very surprised, while Toriko asked Melk where the Melk Stardust ingredient was, so, Melk told them, it's a type of sharpening stone, when you sharpen a hard material, golden powder falls out, and it's used as a seasoning for food, which delighted Toriko. It turns out this ingredient was discovered by Melk the first, now. Knowing that Melk needed a Melk Stardust sharpening stone, Toriko promised to find it for him, in exchange, he had to make a knife for Komatsu, but, Melk said the place was very dangerous, only his master could enter, however, it had been six years and he hadn't returned, so, Toriko promised Melk to go there and bring back Melk the first, but first, he had to eat, thus, Toriko went outside to find food, suddenly, he saw a flock of level 39 sky scum birds. So, Toriko defeated them with just one blow, which surprised Melk. Then, Komatsu started cooking, finally, he prepared dinner, Melk tried it, and found it very delicious, at this point. Melk told them both, the Melk Stardust was in a place called the Heavy Hole, it has a depth of 32,000 feet, and the gravity down there is very strong. So the next morning, Toriko went to the Heavy Hole, while Melk and Komatsu were waiting at home. Suddenly, a level 30 Vampire Kong appeared, making Komatsu scared, turns out its name was Pachiko, Melk's pet, and it was delivering a package for Melk, after handing the bag to Melk, Pachiko immediately climbed back to its nest to stand guard, on Toriko's side, he had descended into the heavy hole, turns out, he had previously asked Komatsu to come along, because he knew the place was too dangerous, Komatsu had refused, so, Toriko told Komatsu to give him his knife, to make it seem like Komatsu was with him, and instructed Komatsu to stay here for an important task, turns out Toriko realized, Komatsu was very eager to learn about Melk's work, so, Toriko continued down, on Komatsu's side, he was intrigued, seeing so many knives here, turns out these knives, were all sharpened by famous chefs around the world thanks to Melk, which delighted Komatsu, at this point, Melk said when he saw Komatsu's knife, he realized, Komatsu had a lot of affection for his knife, now, Melk started sharpening the knife, while Komatsu saw that this knife was still excellent, but, Melk said this knife was chipped, turns out, its crack was very small, so, Komatsu couldn't see it, when Melk started sharpening the knife, the knife began to shine and sparkle, Komatsu realized Melk's method of working, similar to when he focused on cooking, and Melk had focused all his spirit into his work, Komatsu realized, Melk was truly amazing, on Toriko's side, he noticed his body was getting heavier, suddenly, a group of beasts appeared, he recognized it as a level 44 Balbamoth, so, it attacked Toriko, Toriko realized the gravity here, was making him move slower, 
but, the beasts here moved very fast. Toriko realized if he relied only on sight, he couldn't keep up with their speed. So, Toriko began to predict its movement, and he managed to avoid the attacks of the beast pack, thanks to his previous experience in the gourmet world. Toriko realized defense was also very important, so, he decided to use a new technique. Toriko used his fork, to create a shield to protect himself from the attacks of the beast pack, and Toriko succeeded. Thus, he continued to descend below. The next day, Melk cooked soup for Komatsu. Unexpectedly, Melk's cooking was also very delicious. Komatsu realized it. Melk added wine to the soup. At this point, Komatsu continued to watch Melk work. Even though Komatsu saw Melk's work was excellent, but, Melk was very self-conscious, always saying he wasn't as good as his master. By evening, Komatsu had bathed in hot springs. He realized Melk was already the best knife sharpener in the world. On Toriko's side, he felt his body had become much stronger, but, these monsters continued to attack him, so, Toriko defeated them. At this point, when Komatsu had just finished bathing, he went to find Melk, making Melk feel embarrassed, because he was only wearing underwear. It turns out he just wanted to advise Melk to rest. By evening, when Komatsu went to bed, he still heard the sound of Melk sharpening knives. It turns out before Toriko left, he had instructed Komatsu to stay with Melk. On Melk's side, he still felt embarrassed. After seeing Komatsu's body, on Toriko's side, he had descended very deeply, but, he still hadn't seen the bottom. At this point, his body was very heavy, making Toriko dizzy and unable to stand. Suddenly, Komatsu's knife fell out. So, Toriko remembered Komatsu, helped him regain his spirits, and continued to jump down below. At this point, Toriko had descended very deep. He realized his body weighed nearly a ton, causing immense pressure on his body. Suddenly, Toriko realized, instead of resisting gravity, he would relax and roll like a ball. This significantly reduced the pressure on Toriko. Suddenly, he accidentally dropped Komatsu's knife. So, Toriko tried to catch it. At this moment, he saw a group of level 46 ruby crabs, and the meat of this crab species was very delicious. He realized it was thanks to Komatsu's knife that he had arrived here. Thus, Toriko decided to eat them. On Komatsu's side, Melk still hadn't gone to sleep. Komatsu saw Melk was bathing, so, he decided to cook some soup for Melk. While Melk was moved by Komatsu's words, making Melk very happy, Suddenly, Komatsu brought the soup to Melk, he immediately noticed, turns out Melk was a girl. Despite feeling embarrassed, Melk tried to remain calm. While Komatsu felt helpless, on Toriko's side, he had eaten a lot of ruby crab meat to regain strength. Suddenly, he realized, another monster was approaching. But, Toriko was excited, because he knew this was the bottom of the heavy hole. Turns out it was a level 53 scorpion demon cattle, the most powerful creature in this place. When Toriko was about to unleash his gourmet cells to fight it, surprisingly, the monster showed fear. Toriko realized it wasn't him the creature was afraid of. A man appeared behind him, and he immediately chased the monster away. Toriko recognized him as Melk the first, but, his voice was too faint for Toriko to hear. At that moment, the monster returned and gave him a stone. Thanks to the stone, he could speak normally again. The next morning, Komatsu prepared breakfast for Melk. So, Melk told Komatsu, that she had been abandoned in the forest when she was young, thus, Melk the first took her in for nurturing. Although she was Melk's disciple, Melk didn't allow her into his workplace, so, she sneaked in herself, accidentally dropping two knives on the ground, leaving two scars on her face, but, she still loved knives, so, Melk decided to let her watch him work. Komatsu thought Melk the first was amazing, but, Melk never spoke to her, thus, Melk the second always tried to earn recognition from their master, yet, Komatsu thought Melk was already amazing, on Toriko's side, he followed Melk the first, who led him to his workplace, much to Toriko's surprise, as it turned out to be his knife warehouse, he explained that this stone is an amplifier stone, from a bird species called rock condor, which can amplify sounds, and this scorpion demon cattle is just a small one, but, fighting it would still be very difficult for Toriko, it turns out Melk is friends with Ichiryu, who has spoken a lot about Toriko to Melk. Although Melk is friendly, people avoid him because of his terrifying appearance. He only recently found the amplifier stone. Toriko realized that because Melk speaks so softly, no one understands what he's saying. When Melk learned Toriko had met his daughter, it surprised him. Meanwhile, Komatsu continued to cheer for Melk, saying she's amazing and has her own talents, not needing to be compared to Melk the first. This touched Melk. 
but, she still worried about him, as he had been gone for so long without returning, while orders kept coming in, so, Melk had to take over his work, while Pachiko outside waited faithfully for Melk, at this moment, Komatsu wanted Melk to feel better, thus, he immediately gathered some ingredients, to prepare a meal for Melk, Komatsu finished cooking a table full of food for Melk, meanwhile, Melk the first told Toriko, that his daughter is a genius, her knife skills are just as good as his, it turns out Melk came here to work for Ichiryu, to create a knife with Acacia's ingredient, this surprised Toriko, so, he handed over all tasks to Melk, to let her become Melk the second, but, Toriko said she didn't know Melk had acknowledged her, which shocked Melk, knowing she was still handling his work well, Melk felt relieved, meanwhile, Melk the second was still enjoying Komatsu's food, making her very happy, because Komatsu's dishes were delicious, Komatsu said all these dishes, were made using knives she crafted, which deeply moved Melk, because Komatsu had acknowledged her, at this point, Melk led Toriko to the Melk Stardust, making him very happy, so, Toriko used the 15 hit nail punch to collect it, the next day, Melk was teaching Komatsu how to sharpen knives, suddenly, Toriko returned, this made Komatsu very happy, at this moment, Toriko recounted everything to Melk, learning that his foster father was still alive, so, she felt relieved, Toriko showed both of them the Melk Stardust, which surprised them greatly, thus, Melk decided to make a really good knife for Komatsu, and she took out a secret ingredient of hers, it turns out to be a tooth from a dragon king, this is a legendary ingredient that Melk the first had found, when Komatsu learned that Melk wanted to use this ingredient to make a knife for him, it surprised him, Melk said she wanted to create a really good knife for Komatsu, and she would also use his broken knife, because she knew Komatsu valued this knife greatly, which moved Komatsu deeply, it turns out Melk the first had also praised Komatsu's knife, for recognizing his love for his knife, when Toriko handed him his training list, Melk said it was the perfect time to get the Mellow Cola, but it was located in the Gourmet Pyramid, which surprised Melk the second, because that place was extremely dangerous, known as the Graveyard of Bishikuya, Toriko realized it was time to bring in Zebra's strength, in the following days, Melk began crafting a knife for Komatsu, but, the Dragon King's tooth was very hard, using regular grinding stones wouldn't work, so, Melk used Melk Stardust instead, meanwhile, Toriko was intrigued, because Melk Stardust dust, making him very hungry, now, the Dragon King's tooth began to glow, Melk said Komatsu's knife would soon be complete, in the following days, she continued to work on Komatsu's knife, next, she heated the knife in the fire, and began to forge it, Meanwhile, Toriko and Komatsu were bathing in hot water. Komatsu asked Toriko, did you already know Melk was a girl? It turns out that during the battle, Toriko had realized, and understood that Melk lacked confidence in herself, so, he asked Komatsu to stay with Melk, to help her regain confidence, now, Toriko noticed that Komatsu had a crush on Melk, making him embarrassed, suddenly, they were attacked again, a sharp blade split their bathtub in half, Toriko realized, Komatsu's knife was completed, while Melk was very surprised, because this knife was too sharp, suddenly, both of them ran in naked, making Melk embarrassed, now, Komatsu saw his name on the knife, which made him very happy, so, they decided to have a celebration feast, while Komatsu was looking for ingredients, he saw a very large hazelnut, thus, he tried to use the new knife to cut it, because last time his knife broke when cutting hazelnuts, unexpectedly, Komatsu only needed to make a light cut, and the hazelnut split into two, which made Komatsu very excited, so, he started using this knife to cook for both of them, thanks to its sharpness, Komatsu could finally cut the ingredients, finally, Komatsu finished making a pizza, thus, Toriko and Melk tried it, which Toriko really enjoyed, because it tasted delicious, now, Komatsu added Melk Stardust to the pizza, making it glow, at the gourmet prison, Chairman Ichiryu and Yosaku have arrived, surprising the warden, it turned out they came to find Zebra, so, the warden went to inform the chief guard, meanwhile, Zebra realized he was about to be released, at this moment, Toriko returned, and went to eat with Koko and Sunny, Toriko said he would go get the Mellow Cola this time, Koko realized that this training mission for Toriko would be very difficult, now, Komatsu arrived late, because he was excited to explore this restaurant, it turned out to be a very large horse-drawn carriage, pulled by two Giga Horse Level 64 beasts, so, the carriage started moving, exciting everyone, 
because they could travel on this horse-drawn carriage. This carriage was equipped with all luxurious amenities. At this moment, Toriko said they would go to another place tomorrow, before reaching the gourmet pyramid, surprising Komatsu. By evening, the whole group was dining together, and Tina came to film them, as it was rare to see the four heavenly kings gathering. Unexpectedly, Zanj was also here, so, they all had a feast together. Toriko and Komatsu enjoyed many delicious dishes here, making them very happy. In the evening, they enjoyed a very luxurious wine party. Now, Komatsu thanked Sunny for providing him with the contact information for knocking Master Jiro last time. So, Sunny asked Komatsu to dance with him, while Toriko danced with Koko, and Tina danced with Zanj. Unexpectedly, they were chased by security guards, because they had sneaked onto the carriage. Now, Komatsu showed his milk knife to Sunny and Koko. Unexpectedly, Sunny's hair strands touched it and got cut. Sunny then asked Toriko and Komatsu if milk stardust tasted good. But, Toriko said it was there in Melk's secret, making Sunny angry, while Coco wondered why Toriko didn't go directly to the gourmet pyramid. Instead of taking this horse-drawn carriage, suddenly, the carriage announced they had arrived at the gourmet prison. Toriko realized they had reached their destination. So, Toriko and Komatsu immediately prepared to depart. It turned out Toriko's purpose in coming here was to pick up Zebra. But, because this place was too dangerous, the horse-drawn carriage couldn't stop for too long. Toriko informed Komatsu that Zebra was very strong, so they needed his strength to enter the gourmet pyramid. Toriko then asked Sunny and Koko to help him meet Zebra, but they immediately refused, making Toriko very angry. Komatsu realized that even Sunny and Koko didn't want to meet Zebra. As Toriko and Komatsu were entering the prison, Toriko heard Zebra's voice behind him, surprising Toriko, because he realized Zebra was much stronger than he thought. While Zebra was still in prison waiting for them, at this point, Komatsu felt puzzled, because Toriko kept talking to himself, making Komatsu worried, thinking he might be going crazy. As they approached the prison, Assistant Warden Oban welcomed them, and he took Toriko and Komatsu into the prison. He explained that this was a place for imprisoning criminals, who violated the laws set by Igo, and they were all dangerous criminals. There are three prisons in the world. The first prison is floating in the sky at an altitude of 32,000 feet. The second prison is located at the bottom of the ocean at a depth of 7,000 feet. And the third prison is here, capable of holding about 100 million prisoners. And this is the largest prison in the world. Around the prison are dangerous beasts guarding it. At this point, Komatsu realized that the people working here were all very frightening. Now, Oban led them to see penalty gate number 5. It turned out that this place was for food thieves. There is a criminal who has lost his sense of taste. This made him unable to taste the sweetness of food. Another criminal had his sense of enjoyment taken away. So, he didn't enjoy anything anymore. It turns out this place takes away what the prisoners love. The next floor is for poisonous ingredients. Then the next is where the prisoners can only drink water but not eat. Next is the floor where prisoners are deprived of water. This prison is like a beehive. Each floor has different punishments, making Komatsu surprised. Because this place is too terrifying, at this point, Toriko and Komatsu were taken to the warden's office. Surprisingly, she was just a little girl, she introduced herself as Love, the warden of this prison. Surprisingly, Toriko found Love very beautiful. Suddenly, Love transformed into a beautiful woman, making Toriko and Komatsu infatuated. It turns out that's her mesmerizing ability. Luckily, Love dispelled this ability. Toriko realized this is the effect of pheromones a substance used to attract others, making every creature unable to resist her charm. But, only Zebra is immune to her allure. So, Love has a strong affection for Zebra, surprising Toriko and Komatsu. At this point, she led both of them to Zebra's middle confinement, while Komatsu didn't understand why Zebra was imprisoned in this terrifying place. It turns out it's because he ate too much, which made Komatsu even more puzzled, because eating a lot shouldn't result in a death sentence, since entering the prison, Zebra has been constantly tortured, but, he's still alive until now. Toriko and Komatsu then saw Zebra, and Komatsu wondered, is this the last of the four heavenly kings? Oban said Zebra is about to be tortured, his limbs tied to four giant beasts, so, they began to pull Zebra, but, he reversed the pull, and immediately shouted, causing the prison to tremble, and the four beasts all fainted, making everyone cover their ears. At this moment, Zebra broke free from the chains and said, long time no see, Toriko, the next day, when the world heard that Zebra had been released, 
It caused chaos everywhere, fearing he would cause serious economic damage. While Komatsu was preparing a delicious meal to celebrate Zebra's freedom, but when Zebra appeared, it immediately frightened Komatsu. He even threatened to eat Komatsu. So, Toriko intervened to stop Zebra, which angered both of them, and they prepared to fight. Then, Love used her charm to restrain them, causing Toriko to lose control. But, this trick was completely ineffective against Zebra. At this point, both of them calmed down and started eating. Toriko informed Zebra that their current journey is to find Mellow Cola, making Zebra's mouth water, unexpectedly, in the blink of an eye. They finished all the food, surprising Komatsu. Suddenly, Oban announced to them, that the forest demon had appeared. Love explained that it's currently monster season, called the death season forest. The season is divided into four types. Magma, mist, freeze, and beast. The magma season is the eruption of magma from below. The mist season is toxic fog and thorn-covered grass covering the area. The freeze season consists of blizzards, and currently, it's the beast season, with the appearance of ferocious level 60 monsters. The strongest monster is the forest demon. Unexpectedly, this made Zebra very excited. At this moment, Komatsu saw many monsters outside. It turns out the forest demon is the magma tortoise level 70. Komatsu worried. Not sure if Zebra going out alone is okay. So, Toriko informed him that Zebra's strength lies in using sound to create destructive shockwaves. At this moment, Zebra took a deep breath and he shouted, creating a huge sound sphere. It turns out Zebra's crime was eating and killing many animals causing over 26 species to become extinct. So, he is considered the most dangerous creature. Then, Zebra released his sound sphere, sending lightning bolts at the monsters. Now, only the magma tortoise remained. Thus, Zebra used his voice missile technique to attack the tortoise, and created a massive sound explosion that shook the entire prison. Toriko realized all the monsters had been defeated, but he was completely exhausted too. So, Zebra agreed to go get Mellow Cola with Toriko. The next day, they began their search for Mellow Cola. At this point, they were riding a cable car into the city, which surprised Komatsu, because the cable car turned out to be a building. Toriko said it would take them a month to reach their destination. Suddenly, Zebra felt hungry again. So, Komatsu went to cook for him. At this point, Zebra kept challenging Toriko, but he was consistently rejected. Thus, he attacked Toriko, and they started fighting, causing damage to the house. Komatsu then understood why Koko and Sunny didn't want to meet Zebra. So, he continued to ask Komatsu to cook for him. At this moment, Komatsu noticed that the food in the fridge was almost gone after only three days, while Toriko and Zebra were fighting over a piece of meat. Luckily, they still had some reserve food, making Komatsu worried that they would destroy the house. Fortunately, Toriko realized they had reached the sand garden. Now, Komatsu felt relieved, because they had arrived at their destination. Unexpectedly, the house was immediately destroyed. So, Komatsu realized they were still lucky. They started going into the town, to prepare food for the journey. Then, Toriko threw some sand ice, surprisingly, it was very cool and melted in their mouths. Just like they were eating ice cream, at this point, Toriko bought some necessary tools, but there were no camels in the town. So, Toriko had to go outside the town to find camels. Meanwhile, Komatsu was worried, about whether Zebra could catch up with them. But, Toriko said Zebra would catch up with them soon. Thus, Toriko found a place to rent camels, and an old lady came to talk to them. Komatsu realized the place was very desolate. So, the old lady told both of them, that this place had been destroyed by war before. But, thanks to someone who helped them end the war. Suddenly, Zebra caught up, and blamed Toriko for leaving him behind. Unexpectedly, when the old lady realized he was Zebra, all the people in the village surrounded him making Komatsu surprised. Toriko said that Zebra inadvertently saved this village, because when they heard he was released, all the nations in the world ended their wars, and they began to cooperate to fight against Zebra. So, the villagers were very grateful to him, because they had a peaceful life thanks to him. Suddenly, Zebra heard something approaching. It turned out to be an eight-tailed scorpion level 23, a biological weapon left over from the war, when it was about to attack a little girl. Zebra immediately used the voice cutter technique, and cut the scorpion into pieces, making all the villagers happy. At this point, Toriko told Komatsu, about the 26 species of creatures that Zebra made extinct, which were all dangerous creatures that disrupted the ecological balance. At this moment, Komatsu realized, that although Zebra was very hot-tempered, he wasn't a bad person, 
So, Toriko managed to rent two camels, they continued on to the gourmet pyramid. It turns out this giant camel's body contains a lot of water, thus, they can drink water directly from the camel's body. At this time, the temperature of the sand garden is 60 degrees Celsius, making Komatsu feel very exhausted. So, Toriko told him to drink water, suddenly, a pack of desert sharks level 8 appeared, and they attacked Toriko's group, so, Zebra used sound waves to drive the sharks away. Toriko explained that this technique is called weak point voice. Zebra creates a sound that the sharks hate the most, by evening, they encountered a sandstorm, after that, the whole group rested, and the next morning, they resumed their journey, at this point, Toriko noticed, that they had arrived at the desert labyrinth, making Komatsu surprised, because the sand here is red, as soon as they stepped inside, they felt the intense heat, at this moment, Toriko remembered the heat in the gourmet world, so, he worried about Komatsu, unexpectedly, he disappeared, suddenly, many sand pits appeared, and just before they were about to be swallowed, Toriko and Zebra escaped. Zebra realized Komatsu had been led away by the desert's illusions, so, he decided to use sound waves to find Komatsu, while Toriko dealt with the monsters, at this point, Zebra used the echo map technique, creating a map made of sound, to locate Komatsu, suddenly, he discovered Komatsu falling down below, while Toriko fought and subdued the monsters, Zebra realized Komatsu was being sucked down by the sinking sand, meanwhile, Komatsu was still falling, unexpectedly, there were many monsters below, while Toriko was deeply worried about Komatsu, so, Zebra led Toriko to find Komatsu, thanks to the echo map skill, Zebra could see through the illusions, and guide Toriko in the right direction, suddenly, a sand flower fish level 9 attacked them, so, Toriko used his fork to defeat it, they then cut the fish to eat, to replenish their energy, finally, they saw the gourmet pyramid, which surprised Toriko, because the pyramid was very tall, but, Zebra said, this is only the top part of the pyramid, so, he continued to use the echo map, and discovered there was a palace beneath this pyramid, thus, Zebra tried to call Komatsu, at this point, Komatsu had been taken inside the pyramid, making him surprised, because he didn't know where he was, it turns out earlier Komatsu had been blown down by a sandstorm into a sand pit, suddenly, Komatsu saw a terrifying monster, when the monster attacked Komatsu, Zebra immediately protected him, immediately threatening the monster to run away, Zebra then informed Komatsu, that he had entered the gourmet pyramid, so, his priority now, was to try to survive until they found him, which made Komatsu happy, thus, he decided to gather some information about Melo Kola, while Toriko and Zebra had found the entrance to the pyramid, upon entering inside, they saw many passages, thanks to the echo map, Zebra found the way, but, he was getting exhausted, because he had been trying to maintain this echo map since Komatsu went missing, as they descended, they were blocked by a monster, it turned out to be a Gorgips level 42, and it immediately attacked them, so, Zebra and Toriko released their gourmet cells, and they quickly defeated the monster together, after eating its meat, they continued descending, meanwhile, Komatsu was searching for Melo Kola, but, he discovered that there are many paths here, suddenly, a frog appeared, so, Komatsu quickly hid, luckily, it didn't notice him, while Toriko was still following Zebra, he noticed Zebra was getting tired, because of maintaining the echo map for too long, it turns out the Zebra's echo map spans up to 43 miles, thus, he needs about 60,000 kilocalories in 5 minutes, and he maintained it for 5 hours, so, Zebra consumed over 3,600,000 kilocalories, suddenly, another monster appeared, Toriko recognized it as the Unicorn Cerberus level 63, because Zebra was exhausted, Toriko took care of it, and he used 15 hit nail punches to defeat one of its heads, Toriko continued to defeat the second head, suddenly, he was attacked sneakily, so, Zebra intervened to help Toriko, it turned out he wanted to eat this monster, thus, Zebra released his gourmet cells, and immediately used all his strength to defeat the monster, but, Zebra also lost his voice, Toriko realized he no longer had the energy to use the echo map, on Komatsu's side, he saw a very peculiar footprint, he immediately recognized it as the footprint of the monster in vegetable sky, suddenly, something appeared behind him, while Zebra and Toriko were eating the unicorn Cerberus, and helping them regain their energy, but, Zebra still couldn't speak, it turns out Toriko's energy was 3 million kilocalories, while Zebra's was 4, 5 million kilocalories, although he couldn't use the echo map, 
Zebra still remembered the way, so, Toriko smashed a pile of rocks, and they found the way down below, on Komatsu's side, he encountered a level 38 snail, when it attacked him, unexpectedly, Komatsu was protected, turns out this technique is called sound armor, at this point, Zebra instructed Komatsu to hold up the knife and process the ingredients, thus, Komatsu took out Melk's knife, which frightened the snail, so, Komatsu chopped it, unexpectedly, the blow was too strong, causing Komatsu to fall down below, on Toriko's team's side, they were being attacked by Dangle level 40, so, Toriko immediately subdued them, at this point, Komatsu had fallen to the floor below, thus, he continued to search for Melo Kola, suddenly, Komatsu encountered Monoclops level 45, so, Komatsu ran away, accidentally, he ran into a room, seeing many coffins inside, which made him worried, now, Komatsu saw a painting on the wall, suddenly, a monster appeared inside the coffin, while Komatsu didn't understand what the paintings on the wall depicted, he saw a glowing book, so, Komatsu tried to read it, suddenly, Komatsu was attacked again, on Toriko's side, they were still eating, but the snail meat was too tough, unexpectedly, Zebra could easily eat it, at this point, his energy level had recovered by 60%, while Zebra's was only 7%, now, they saw a tiger fang level 35 again, on the monster's side, it was attacking Komatsu, but no matter how it attacked, it also couldn't break Zebra's sound armor, Komatsu realized that the sound armor was weakening, suddenly, the monoclops appeared, so, the monster immediately attacked it, when Komatsu was about to run away, he decided to take the book with him, on Toriko and Zebra's side, they were still eating, Toriko had recovered 73% and Zebra 20%, on the way, they continued to encounter many monsters, so, both of them subdued the creatures, unexpectedly, Toriko found it easier to eat than Zebra this time, so, his energy had recovered to 80%, while Zebra's was at 40%, both of them encountered another monster again, so, they immediately defeated and ate it, this time Toriko's energy was at 85% and Zebra's at 80%, after a while of searching for food, finally, Zebra regained his voice, and both of their energy levels were close to max, so, Zebra used Echo Map to find Komatsu, while Komatsu was running away, suddenly, he encountered a giant sphinx, which frightened him, thus, Zebra used sound to threaten the Sphinx, but, he was pushed back by it, Zebra continued to use Echo Map, and realized that Komatsu was below them, so, Zebra immediately used the sound bazooka technique to destroy the place, creating a large hole leading down below, this caused the place where Komatsu was standing to collapse, when he was about to be crushed by a rock, Toriko managed to cut it in half to save Komatsu, making Komatsu very happy, because he met Toriko and Zebra again, at this point, the Sphinx is very angry, Zebra realizes that this Sphinx has destroyed his sound armor, so, he decides to eat it, Zebra immediately uses the voice missile technique to shoot at the Sphinx, then, he continues to use thunder noise, creating a sound sphere above the Sphinx's head, releasing a huge lightning bolt to strike it, surprisingly, the Sphinx remains unharmed, so, it attacks Zebra, at this point, Toriko smells cola on the Sphinx, it turns out that earlier Melk had told Toriko, Melo Cola is inside the body of the Salamander Sphinx, and it is the ruler of the Gourmet Pyramid, it turns out the level of the Salamander Sphinx is 92, making Toriko and Zebra excited to defeat it, so, both release their Gourmet Cells, to prepare for the battle with the Salamander Sphinx, while Komatsu was reading an ancient book, and he discovers a cooking formula, thus, Toriko and Zebra immediately attack the Sphinx, but, it's too strong, their normal attacks have no effect, making the Sphinx angry, so, both have to cooperate to block its attacks, at this point, both realize how powerful the Sphinx is, suddenly, Komatsu told them, Melo Kola is actually the tears of the Sphinx, it turns out all the ingredients inside this gourmet pyramid, are recorded in ancient books, making Zebra suspicious, how did you read it? But, Toriko said, because Komatsu is favored by the ingredients, so, the ingredients have sought out Komatsu, and led him here, now, Komatsu will guide them in preparing the Sphinx, making both very excited, continuing to prepare for the battle with the Sphinx, while Toriko's energy is at 73%, and Zebra's is at 66%, so, Toriko and Zebra attacked the Sphinx together, while Komatsu read the book, and instructed them, first, they must hit all over the Sphinx's body evenly, to tenderize its meat, so, Zebra will take care of this, he immediately used the massive sound bazooka technique, 
attacking the entire body of the Sphinx, but after that move, Zebra's energy was halved. Next, they have to attack beneath the Sphinx's belly. So, Toriko quickly ran towards it. Zebra supported by creating a protective shield for Toriko, helping Toriko to reach beneath the Sphinx's belly, and unleashed the 10-hit nail punch technique, causing the Sphinx great pain. So, it became angry and pushed them both back, making Komatsu worried. But, seeing Toriko and Zebra still having confidence in him, so, Komatsu continued to focus on cooking. Next, they had to cut the scales off the Sphinx's back. Thus, Toriko instructed Zebra to distract its attention, and he jumped up to cut the scales off the Sphinx's back. Next, they targeted its legs. So, Zebra shot sound waves at its legs. Toriko noticed Zebra was losing a lot of kilocalories. Next, they had to pluck the feathers of the Sphinx. Thus, Toriko and Zebra jumped onto its wings, and pulled out the feathers. Komatsu noticed the Sphinx's eyes had changed, as if it was about to cry. So, Komatsu instructed them to massage its shoulder meat. Zebra and Toriko attacked the Sphinx's shoulders. At this point, they continuously coordinated their attacks on the Sphinx, making the energy of Toriko and Zebra almost reaching their limits. Finally, with Komatsu's guidance, they made the Sphinx collapse. But, the final step was to attack its tail. Unexpectedly, its tail was a snake. So, both unleashed their ultimate techniques to defeat it, causing the Sphinx great pain. And finally, it cried, seeing the mellow cola pouring out, making them very happy. Suddenly, Komatsu was attacked again, surprising Toriko and Zebra. So, this monster immediately knocked both Toriko and Zebra away. Seeing the mellow cola above, it jumped up and drank all the mellow cola, causing the strength of this monster to increase. At this point, both Toriko and Zebra were completely exhausted. But, seeing Komatsu being defeated, Zebra remembered his promise with Komatsu. He would help them get the mellow cola. But, Komatsu had to cook whatever he wanted. However, Komatsu also had a condition, that Zebra wouldn't harm creatures anymore. Recognizing Komatsu's determination, he proposed that after getting the mellow cola, Komatsu would accompany him, because he would be more compatible with him than Toriko. Seeing Komatsu being defeated in front of him, made Zebra very angry, and he used autophagy, to restore 100% of his energy. Toriko also saw the demon inside his body, and he also used autophagy, but, they only had 5 minutes, to defeat this monster, on IGO's side, they were informing Love, about the GT Robo-like creature discovered by Acacia. So, Acacia studied it, and found that this creature is the key to finding God, inside the gourmet prison. They are also holding one monster, on Toriko's side, he used the 17-hit nail punch, although Toriko was knocked away, but, the arms of this monster were also injured. So, Zebra continuously shot sound waves at it, making the monster collapse. He thought they had defeated it, but, it immediately attacked Zebra. Toriko realized it was his nail punch technique. Turns out it had learned his technique. Toriko knew they didn't have much time left, so, he said, it's time to use coordinated skills. When the monster continued to attack them, Zebra immediately intervened. Toriko used leg fork and leg knife, but, its skin was too tough. So, Toriko used the 17-hit nail punch. Unexpectedly, he missed. It turns out Toriko was attracting its attention, for Zebra to deliver a strong blow to the monster, thinking they had defeated it, but, it dodged, and appeared behind Zebra. However, Toriko was also ready. Zebra turned back and shot sound at Toriko, propelling him towards the monster, and Toriko used the 17-hit nail punch combined with Zebra's sound propulsion, creating a powerful blow that knocked away the monster. Unexpectedly, it could still stand up, surprising both of them, because its vitality was too strong. He realized it was about to die. So, Zebra immediately released his gourmet cells and stepped forward, and he used the death sound technique, to give this monster a gentle death. At this point, both didn't understand why this monster appeared here. They realized it was very hungry, like it hadn't eaten anything for thousands of years. Suddenly, Zebra heard Komatsu's heartbeat, making Toriko very happy, because Komatsu was still alive. Turns out Zebra had previously added sound armor to Komatsu. Thanks to that, Komatsu was still safe. At this point, they thought they had lost the mellow cola, but Komatsu saw the Sphinx still crying. He said, it's still here. Turns out the amount of mellow cola pouring out initially was just a small part. The mellow cola pouring out later was the real mellow cola. So, the Sphinx cried causing Mellow Cola to continuously pour out from its eyes, making Toriko and Zebra very happy. Thus, Toriko decided to try drinking it. Unexpectedly, it tasted very delicious, 
immediately helping his body recover, Toriko even felt, his cells were evolving, and Zebra was also very excited, because his cells had also evolved, so, Zebra decided, he would include Mellow Cola in his full course menu, at this point, he asked Komatsu, do you want to accompany me? Surprising Toriko, turns out Komatsu had an additional condition earlier, that he wanted to know Zebra's full course menu, but, Zebra said he didn't have one, which surprised Komatsu, because all Bishikuya have their own full course menu, so, Komatsu told Zebra, he believed Toriko's full course menu was amazing, thus, he wanted to cook dishes from Toriko's full course menu, so, Zebra decided, he would also have a truly classy full course menu, to recruit Komatsu as his teammate, at this point, both argued, Toriko blamed Komatsu for not discussing this with him, but Komatsu said, because I trust you, it turns out Komatsu believed that Toriko's full course menu would not lose to anyone, so, Zebra decided to collect enough full course menu items, to recruit Komatsu as his teammate, realizing it was time to return, Komatsu took out a vacuum machine, to collect all the mellow cola here, so, they obtained a large bottle of mellow cola, when the Sphinx knew Toriko would come back for the cola, it angrily attacked them, finally, they returned to the village, so, Toriko decided to share the mellow cola with everyone, making them very happy, the next day, they were on the lift house returning, while Toriko and Zebra continued to argue, Komatsu realized, the sand garden had returned to peace, and their journey in the gourmet pyramid came to an end, after a month, they finally returned to the gourmet restaurant, so, Komatsu cooked a delicious meal for Toriko and Zebra, making them very delighted, because the taste of mellow cola was too good, while the restaurant had to continuously cook for both of them, they ate very quickly, in just a few moments, they finished all the restaurant's food, Zebra asked Komatsu, why didn't you cook that monster? Suddenly, Mansam appeared, they immediately chased everyone out, turns out they came to take that monster, making Zebra angry, because it was his prey, but, Mansam said he couldn't defeat him, because he was a member of Biotope Zero, located in the world of Gourmet, turns out they were residents of the Gourmet world, like Melk and Yosaku, they were all members of Biotope Zero, and Mansam told them, these creatures are called Nitro, and they are ancient creatures, that lived on Earth hundreds of millions of years ago, turns out Nitro have a mechanism called hibernation, so, they can sleep for thousands of years, and there is another one inside the Gourmet Pyramid, making both of them surprised, Mansam said that the Bishikukai organization had taken action, because Nitro can access God, so, the boss of the Bishikukai created GT Robo to find God, and the war is about to begin, but Toriko said, as long as we get God, and share it with everyone, then the war will end, today's video ends here, remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel, to support Oni-chan in the next videos, thank you for watching, love you forever.